That's where my spare wheel went. All right, so we're back with the Triumph 1250 today, and we're going to be doing a couple of little things to improve the boot. Uh, there's no carpet in here at the moment, so we're going to be fitting on the road. We're also going to be connecting the antenna to the radio area at the front, and then we'll be 3D printing a label for the tank to show where the reserve tap is. So, without further ado, let's get to it. So when I first bought the car, it had a manual pull-out aerial, but since then I've fitted this electric one with a switch on the dashboard to raise it and lower it. Um, however, I haven't connected it yet because the connector for the antenna is under the seat. Uh, so I'm going to try and take out these four bolts which hold the back of the seat on and we'll see if we can connect it. I should be able to just pull the new cable through and connect the two. Although I might take the seat out anyway because it's incredibly rusty. And I think I should treat that before the rust gets any worse. So I'll take that out and then we can connect it. So this is the antenna extension cable here. This goes to the radio and this is my new cable from the antenna itself. Plug that in like that. Hmm. That needs de-rusting and I'll vacuum out the leaves on the inside as well. very rusty, clearly some water has got in, especially around this corner. So I'm going to rub it down and then put rust converter on it. And hopefully that will stop it rusting anymore. This is a classic example of how one job can turn into four. While the rust converter is drying on the rear seat, I'm going to put some new carpet in the boot. Rather than buying a fitted carpet for the car at vast expense, we've been down to the local hardware shop and we've bought some of this. And we're going to try and cut this to make it fit. So I've got it roughly into position now and I'm going to start trimming the edges off so we can then get it to fit the boot exactly. I'm going to start with this bit. And that should then be able to hold like that. And, and I'm just using this crayon to mark out where I need to cut. Now I 
just going to tuck it into the top of the wing. That way I probably won't even have to cut it. It'll also cover up the area where the antenna is. this around and back in behind the rear wheel arch and that's now covering the antenna and the arch itself so that's good and now all I have to do is cut just along here so it's flush with the edge So the rear seat has just about finished being rust converted now. It's still quite rusty, but I don't think there's much we can do about that. We'll have to look for a new one in the long term because the mesh is just completely rusted out. Yeah, it's gone. Um, so I'll put it back in the car now. Now all I have to do is put the little nuts back on to hold the seat in properly. Now the next job is a relatively simple one. Originally, on the interior lamp of the car, they would have come with one of these little filament type bulbs. However, they get very hot and I was worried about it deforming the dashboard in some way, so I never put it in. Instead, I made my own, which sat up here like this and it did work. However, every time we went over a bump, it fell out. So it wasn't much good in that respect. And then eventually it got hot and warped the plastic. So, I've given up and I bought myself one of these, which is a replacement for the original, but it's LED and it should just slot in up here like that. And then when I open the door, it comes on. Perfect, job done. So originally this car would have had a little decal here, which would have told the user uh, in which position the little tap on top of the tank is in the main position or the reserve position for the main or the reserve tank. To add a selling feature to the Herald in the 1960s, they decided to put the so-called reserve tank in, which isn't really a reserve tank. All it is is a tap which moves the hose inside the tank so you can suck out a bit more petrol. <laughs> The seven gallon petrol tank is neatly housed at the side and peace of mind is ensured by inclusion of a one gallon reserve, easily brought into action by a valve on top of the tank. But mine is unfortunately missing the decal, so I'll pop onto the computer and see if I can whip something up with a 3D printer to look the same. Well, here we are on the computer, and as you can see, I have started by downloading an original copy of the fuel tap decal, which would have been stuck to the Triumph's fuel tank in the 60s. And here I have just quickly inverted it, and also added on a little Easter egg of my own, which is the Welsh translation of the various different things. Following that, I've converted it to an SVG file using an online conversion tool, and that will allow me to 
import this into my 3D printing CAD software. In 123D Design, I've imported the SVG file and I've extruded it to create a 3D model. I also made a backing plate and just rounded off the edges to make it look a bit smarter when it's put on the car. Then I saved that as an STL file, which allowed me to bring it into Prusa Slicer, the software which translates the 3D model into instructions for the printer. Here I'm just tidying it up a bit and correcting any mistakes I've made on the lettering, for example. And I used my original Prusa i3 Mark 2.5S. It took about two hours to print at 0.15 millimeters resolution with the 0.25 millimeter diameter nozzle. All right, so I've taken the label off the printer and I've given it a little brush down to remove all the hairs. Looks good, so I think we're ready to put on the car. I might just give it a go over with the lacquer, just make it nice and shiny. It's a bit later now and I've allowed the lacquer to dry on it. It's certainly looking nice and shiny. So I think I'll call that done and I'll put some adhesive foam tape on the back uh, so it'll stick onto the fuel tank nicely. difficult. My scissors kept getting stuck and it kept sticking to everything it wasn't meant to. i um, done it now though, so I'll peel that off and we can pop that on the fuel tank. So here is the finished decal. I'm going to put it on here like so, so the arrow points to the reserve tap, which is up here. Uh, but first I'll give the top of the tank a wipe with meths so it sticks properly. And now I will peel off the foam backing. And I'll stick it on. There we are. Job done. So today, We've carpeted the boot, we've designed, 3D printed and applied the little label for the tank reserve tap and we've reconnected the antenna, discovering that the seat base was rusty in the process, but that's how it goes sometimes and it'll be a project for a future video. So without further ado, thank you for watching and ta-ta for now.